Uh, we just want to thank everyone in the community for all the support we've seen. We've felt so helpless and seeing everybody out here really looking and helping out really means a lot. So, tell us what happened the night this kid went missing. <sighs> okay. From our yard. First off, I want to say thank you to each and every last one of you guys for the continuous love and support. If it was not for you, all the subscribers, this case would surely have gone cold. 100%, I believe that with everything I have. Now, most of us want to know why this location? Why did they choose to move to California City when they could have moved anywhere else? I'm going to let you guys know right now the reason why they decided to move to this city and not anywhere else. Trezell and Jacqueline did their homework and they know there are other people that has vanished from California City that has never been found. Cold cases. They didn't just want to relocate just to relocate. They were running from the actual crime scene which took place in Bakersfield, California. According to Trezell, he wanted to be off the grid. Well, some of that might be true. He did want to be off the grid, but they also chose this small little town for a reason. In 2019, Trezell and Jacqueline West made it official and they adopted two little boys named Classic and Sincere also known as Orin and Orson West. While they were living in Bakersfield, California at the Casa Loma Apartments, both of them decided it was time for them to get on the road and head towards California City. Now, most of you guys should know what happened December 21st of 2020. Trezell and Jacqueline goes on to say that Trezell was in the backyard gathering firewood because it was cold, while Jacqueline was in the house wrapping presents. The story is that the two boys were out in the backyard as well playing with chalk because Jacqueline did not want them to see what presents she was wrapping. Trezell goes to step back into the house and that's when he notices that the boys are not behind him. So he goes on to ask Jacqueline if she's seen the boys and she said no, they were in the backyard playing with chalk. Trezell walks into the backyard and then he realizes the gate was left open. Now, according to Trezell West, he stepped outside the gate to look for the boys and he did not see them. Here's an actual picture from Google Earth. It's an older picture, so none of the vehicles in the front of the property actually belong to them. Now, according to Trezell, he got into his van and he went out to search for Orrin and Orson West, classic and sincere. And according to him... He was out basically the whole night searching for them, and we know that is not true. While he was out searching, Jacqueline was calling 911, but for some odd reason, I believe it was a not emergency number they called and not the actual 911. But we do know that both the boys are gone. Orn and Orson West are nowhere to be found. Okay. It was cold. I was gonna make a fire. There's a lot of wood in this, this area right here next to our house. I opened up the back gate. I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea that they, that our youngest two, go outside and play with chalk on the, the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. We keep them close. So I was playing with chalk, and I came in the house. I saw them there. The one house, I came back out, I didn't see him now. I immediately went back in, asked my wife, did you see the boys? She said, no, they should be outside playing with chalk. I said, well, I didn't see them. So I came back outside and I started searching my backyard. I searched the whole thing. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house, me and my wife. Once that, I didn't pan out. I got in the van. I looked down the street, most directions. It was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. I went down this street, 
I turned my light on, I searched, I searched, I called their names. Talked to a gentleman on the street on the other side over there, he didn't see me. So then I came home and I told my wife, we need to call the cops. Uh, it's getting dark and I need help, we gotta get going. So I called the cops, cops came. First thing they did was tell us to stay in the house so they can get a hold of us. And they had us just sitting there and we wanted to keep searching. But everybody came out in droves and I wanted to thank you guys that night but we couldn't go outside. The cops told us the best are out here. The best are out here searching. And we appreciate it. And nobody ever could tell, we could never talk to anybody. And that was the issue. We just want to thank everybody. We really want to and, thank you uh, guys. Please, if anybody has seen them, please call, let somebody know. It, it, it call the cops, call California the city police department. Call them and let them know what you've seen, if you see anything. Our boys, they, they are going to be rambunctious, okay? <clears throat> they are going to be here in this area. And I really would like to go in the houses, but it's not because I want to invade people's privacy. I just want to know if make they sure. make sure. That's it. Because I don't, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. If you got any questions. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to say, you know, this is the first time we're hearing from you guys, and I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I can't even fathom it. Um, for you guys, for people who are thinking uh, that there's some kind of foul play involved, um, you know, we just spoke to the biological mother. She says she had a conversation with you guys, um, and that she thinks there's some kind of foul play involved, that she thinks you guys did something. And that's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yep. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find our, find our babies, then guess what? That's, that's no. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. And I talked to her this morning, and I really wanted to tell her that um, I am completely sorry because we were entrusted with her children, and they came to us, and they became our children. And we named them. And... They are, they are our children, and so we want them back. So please, if y'all could get back on your what you guys are doing, we'll sh we should be able to get a hold of somebody, but they took all of our tech, so they wanted to, I guess, uh, just rule us out, which makes sense. That's a part of the investigation. So that's pretty much it. Have you guys, um, you talked to the police all last night? Yes. Um, what? So you guys willfully gave them your everything. Technology, yes. The car. Yes. Did they get a? How did they get a search warrant? Did you I, guys? I, oh, no I idea. don't see why they got one, but they got one. Yeah. We would have let them take anything. One. So the reason why they got one is because they did not believe their story. Some people might even bring up the fact that John Walker went on KGET and sat down and said that their story did check out that's far from the truth yes even though he did say that he's not going to come out on kget and openly admit that their story did not make sense and that they were looking at them as murder suspects already if chief john walker came out and said that guess what trezell and jacqueline would have hit the road they would have went and disappeared anywhere. Remember, he's that off-the-grid type of guy, a survivorless. And so by Chief John Walker backing up their story, that made Trezell and Jacqueline feel extra, extra comfortable. So comfortable to the point where they felt like they would never, ever get caught. And that's why they stayed moving around locally in a motorhome through Bakersfield, California, back and forth to California City, California, they felt like they would never, ever get caught for the hideous, vicious crime that they committed against Classic and Sincere. All right, guys, so this is going to be part one. Please be on the lookout for part two, part three, and part four. I will give as much information as I can. Keep in mind, this is still an open investigation, including the case within court.
If you guys could take the time right now to go ahead and punch that like button and comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. A.B. Watchman, A.B. United We Stand.